to do your to, to manage your your current assets. So most of these are in the in the videos. You guys can watch it if you haven't uh, watched it as yet. So we are just going to go into the tutorial, doing some questions, and hopefully it will bring out more about um, about working capital management. So let's start by looking at the first question. So I'm not going to be showing the questions like, uh, like uh, you guys have them, so there's no need to show it. So Bondage, uh, supply company expects sales next year to be 750,000. It says inventory and accounts receivable will have to be increased to accommodate this level. The company has a profit margin of 10% with 30% dividend payout. How much external fund will bondage a supply company have to seek, assuming there's no increase in liabilities other than that will uh, occur with external financing? <coughs> so the company is expecting to have sales of 750,000 and that will cause its, its, its inventory and its account receivable to build up. So it will have to increase its inventory to be able to, to maintain that amount of sales. It will also, because it's, it's now selling more or making this amount of sale, it will have to uh, also increase its accounts receivable which means that it will be selling um, some of its the sales will be on credit. And so there will be accounts receivable. So both of them will increase by 120,000 to accommodate this level of sale. And the company has a profit margin of 10% of with a dividend payout of, of 24. So then the question is how much external financing does the company need? So let's let's start by sharing my screen. Okay, so let's start by looking at this one now. Still in our financing, where's my paper here? All right, so we have $750,000 in sales. Thank you. 
Are you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay. All right, so we have sales of 750,000. So we know that um, a profit margin is, is 10%. So profit margin. So the profit margin is 10%. We know that net income would be $75,000. And we also know that dividend is, uh, is at 30%. So therefore, 30% of 75,000 will be paid out. So 70%, uh, uh, 30% of, that will be 22,500. So we are left um, with increase Increase in retained earnings of the difference between these two, which would be uh, 52,500. So that would be our increase in retained earnings. So the assets is going to be increased, which are uh, by um, 120,000. So the increasing assets we know is 120,000. And we also know that we will be able to finance a portion of that by the retained earnings. And that portion would be 52,500. So the need, the external funds that would be needed would be the difference here again. So I don't want to, I don't want it to be confused with earnings. So let's write it down here as external uh, funds needed. would be the difference here, and this would be 67,500. So this would be our answer to, to question one as to how much external fund would be needed. So the idea is to first figure out how much could be financed internally, and then after we determine how much we will be able to finance internally, then you can find how much um, you need finance from external funds. Clear? Any question? That makes sense. All right. So the second question is similar to the first one. So I will give you guys a, a chance to try that and then we will do it together. 
So you have five minutes. Okay, I hope you guys um, had an answer. Anyone for uh, an answer? Yeah, I got 40,800. Yep. Okay, very good. That sounds good. All right, so let's just do it for um, so that everyone are on the same page. So we have sales of 300,000.
And we know that the profit margin is eight uh, percent. So point zero eight. So therefore, uh, net income would be a percent of three hundred thousand, which would give us uh, twenty-four thousand. And then we know that a dividend would be 20%. So 20% of 24,000 would give us 4,800. So this would be uh, what our increase in retained in retained earnings. And that would be uh, the difference here is that's 19,200. So that's how much we're retained earnings will increase uh, by. And so that's what we could use internally to finance um, the, the $60,000. So the increase in asset was 60,000. And if we less uh, the increase in retained earning, and that's 19,200, then we should have uh, 40,800. Okay, so any questions so far? Oh. All right, let's, let's do question number three. So Garza Electronics expect to sell 500 units in January, 250 units in February, and 100 units in March. So January, beginning inventory is 700 units. So expected sales for the whole year are 7,200 units. So Garza has decided on a month, on a level monthly production schedule of 600 units. So they'll be producing 600 units uh, every month to have an annual production of 7,200 um, units. So what is the expected end of month inventory? for January, February, for, and March. Shows the beginning inventory, production, and sales for each month to arrive at the ending inventory. So we need to show what production is, what sales are, and then we arrive at a monthly inventory. Because of electronics. So, what other month do we have? We have uh, January, February, and March. So, 
not setting up a schedule. So we have beginning inventory. And then we could add production to that. So plus production. And if we minus sales from that, we will end up with our ending inventory. All right. Make sense? Yep. All right. So we know that we started out beginning inventory with 700 in January. Right. So that was our January's inventory. And since we are producing 600 every month, we could actually say 600 in January, 600 in February, and 600 in March. And as well, we also know that we will be selling 500 in January, uh, 250 in March, and 1,000, sorry, 250 in February and 1,000 in March. So we know these numbers. So now we just need to follow this to the end. So for the first month, January, we have uh, 700 plus 600 minus 500 and that gives us 800. So that's our closing inventory for January. Closing inventory for January will be opening inventory for February. So that's 800. Okay, we follow it. So we just add in. So we now have 1400 between uh, beginning inventory and production. Sales is only 250. So that uh, ending inventory will be 1150. Zero and 1150, which is the closing inventory for February, will be the opening inventory for March. So we add our 600 to that minus of 1000, and we have our ending inventory of 750. Any question with regards to that? Nope, seems pretty straightforward. All right, awesome. All right, so I'm going to give you guys 10 minutes to try question four. Uh, for the B part of question four, it's asking you to, to value the inventory every month. So bear in mind that you're finding a valuation for the inventory at the end of each month which means that the, the interest cost that you're going to be using would be for only one month. So just bear that in mind when you're doing your calculations.
So in this in, in, in the question four, you're not asked to do an, uh, a beginning inventory. So there's no need to do a beginning uh, inventory column. So it, you don't need to do that if you um, so desire. Uh, you just need your ending inventory. You need an ending inventory column. You need uh, a unit produced column and you need a unit sold column. I think those are the main three that you you need to focus on having.
Right, anyone has an answer as yet? I think so. Okay, so what did you get for your uh, your end of inventory for each month? Um, October uh, three thousand, November four thousand, January or December one thousand, then January not like zero. Okay, that sounds good. How about second part of it? How about B? Well, what I did was I just took um, like seven dollars times production at eight percent financing, and then I, I don't know if I did that section correctly actually. Um, did you say times production? Yeah, so I ended up getting like a total at the year of like one hundred fifty-one thousand ish. Yeah. Um, so what's the what's the rationale behind times in production and multiplying it by production? Well, because for every production unit, we would need to get a coverage cost from the bank for $7. Yeah. And then the financing of it's additional 8%. Right. Okay. So it's not a production that, um, that you need to cost, right? It says if inventory costs $7 per unit. So it's the inventory. So, so, Okay, uh, we haven't done this yet. We were uh, doing it probably in the next two or three weeks. Uh, inventory has what is called a carrying cost, right? So for you to hold inventory, there's a cost associated with holding inventory. So the question here is if the inventory costs $7 per unit. So if you, this inventory that you have in store is gonna cost you $7 per unit to have it in store. Um, and you have to finance that $7 per unit every month. How much yeah. would that be every month? So it would not be so much production, it would be inventory. Make sense? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, not make it, it, so, is, so it, it didn't sound like, you, it didn't sound like you agree with me. Yeah, uh -huh. go ahead, go ahead. So is it the ending inventory or inventory? Right, yeah, yeah. So it's the inventory that you're holding at the end of the month. Uh, that makes more sense actually. Yeah. Okay, anyone else with an answer? I just have, I guess, a question whether my answer is right or wrong. Um, since it's 8% per year, we're dividing it by 12? Yeah, because you're, what you're doing, you're, um, you're finding the cost for each month, right? So, so, the, uh, so if it's 8% uh, for the year, then for each month it would be a, uh, 8% divided by 12. Yeah, okay. All right. Then, yeah, so we've got our sum be like 56,000? Well, that's a lot of money. If you pay uh, so much for inventory, then you probably will go broke. Um, remember, again, it's the end of the inventory. So you first have to cost the inventory. Mm -hmm. So then you find the financing. So the cost of, say, 3,000 will be 3,000 times 7. So that's about 21,000. But that's that's the cost, that's not the financing uh, part of it. That's not the financing cost. So you have to finance this 21,000. Uh, the cost of financing it would be uh, the borrowing cost, which would be the interest. So now you find 8% of 21,000 and then they divide that by 12 to make sure it's a monthly amount. See what I'm saying? So 373? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, let's let's run through it together so that. Um, all right, uh, is there anyone else who want to work on it and uh, want another minute? Or should I go through it? All right, let's go through it together. All right, so if we have units, 
units sold. We have units produced. I'm just putting in another column, but uh, changing inventory is not a necessary column. December and January. Uh, Gregory, if you're uh, writing on the whiteboard right now, uh, I can't see it. I don't know if anyone else. Oh, you can't see it? Uh, I see the, I'm not sure. Let me, Madonna quote. Okay, let me see what's happening here. Can you hear me? Because my system seems like it's hung up on me. Yeah, we can hear you. Can hear you. All right, let me see if I can get this clear. system seems to have been frozen so I'm, I'm trying to clear it um, probably have to restart it because it's not going up. It just seems to be working now. So are you guys seeing it now? Hello? Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So we, we know the units that will be sold um, in these months, right? Uh, 200. Let's just um, write this properly here. In January.
Hey guys, if you can just uh, bear with me, I think I really have to restart it because it's gone frozen again. So um, I'm just going to restart it because uh, I'm not sure what the problem is. Okay. okay. So if you, you can uh, just look at um, the next question in the meantime, uh, let me restart. All right, hopefully, uh, hopefully it will work now without uh, the issues. All right, guys, so um, I'm at January. Okay, so I'm just putting in the, the, the sales here. We know that there will be <coughs> 2,000 in November, in October, 4,000 in November, uh, 8,000 in December, and January it will be 6,000. So we also know that we're using labor production, so therefore we'll be 5,000 that will be produced every month. And so, <coughs> since we produce 5,000 5, and we, we are selling only two out of that, it means that the change in inventory will be a positive uh, 300. And so inventory, uh, sorry, 3,000. Inventory end of uh, October would be 3,000. In, in November, um, it's only 4,000 was uh, sold. So again, there'll be a positive amount of uh, uh, change in inventory, which means that uh, inventory would go up to 4,000. And then in December, there would be a change in inventory, a negative 
uh, 3,000 change in inventory. And so inventory will fall to 1,000. And, uh, and then inventory will have an, a 1,000 negative change in January. And it would be zero at the end of uh, January. So that's the first part. For the second part, come on. So for the second part, it, it, it tells you uh, that uh, the company, what the cost of the inventory would be, and then it tells you how it uh, but it would be financed at an 8% cost. So we have our ending inventory. And set a cost for our units. Uh, of $7. So in October, December, and January. So in October, we know that invent ended inventory was three thousand, and so at a cost of seven dollars, that would uh, run that into twenty one thousand dollars, and uh, we need to find that financing costs. So it's at 8% per annum. So if it's 8% per annum, then the, the monthly cost would be 8 divided by 12. And so that's 0.67%. Uh, uh, so the cost of financing 3,000 inventory uh, would be uh, uh, multiply 8% of uh, 21,000 and then we divide that by 12. I think that's the simplest way. And that should give us $140. So this would be the cost for uh, keeping 3,000 uh, units of inventory during uh, at the end of October. So at the end of November, inventory will change to 4,000 units. So this 4,000 uh, units cost would be 28,000. And so, how, uh, what's the cost of financing? This would be 186.67. Then at the end of December, it's going to be a thousand. And the thousand would be for $7,000. And so, to finance this, it would cost $46,067. So there will be nothing to finance in January. There was no venture, and so that would be zero. So when we total the, the financing cost for R3, we would have a total of $373.34. cents. Okay, um, was that clear enough? So I have a quick question. I, to be honest, I just kind of zoned out. So to get the finan um, financing cost at eight percent, how do we get that one forty at the very first? What do we do to get it? Okay, so remember that um, the, the financing cost of eight percent is for the entire year, right? Okay. So since it's for the year, to finance it for only one month, what we need to do is to to take the 21,000, which is what it would cost us. Um, so so it's like, it's like say you borrow 21,000 from the bank, 
right? And what is it going to cost you? What is it going to cost you? It's going to cost you 21,000 times the 8% interest over 12 months. Okay. Over 12, and this would give you your one particle. Okay, makes sense. So it's monthly. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, can you move on to the next question? If there's no more uh, question on this one. So, so all those who didn't get the, the, the question four, uh, this is a good opportunity now to get uh, question five, which is pretty much almost the same, um, same method you can use. So you have 10 minutes. This is the percent.
All right, you guys are done? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So what was your answer for your financing charge, total financing charge? 1100. Okay, sounds good. Uh, let's do it together. This is question number five. Sometimes this thing is sleeping. I'm not sure what's happening with this at all. Okay. Are you guys seeing my screen? So last week my computer crashed and I have to get myself a new computer and since then I have been having issues with it. So um, hopefully we can get through each uh, the tutorial without uh, much difficulty, but I have to be dealing with this since last week. Um, changing over then have to bring over my data and that has become 
an issue as well. But it should it should work out in the end. So let's hope so. So units sold in March would be 3,000 units, 7,000 will be sold in April, 11,000 in May, and 9,000 9, in, in June. Okay. So, level production of 7,500. All right, so change in inventory would be a positive amount this month of the difference between these. So inventory would increase by 4,500, which will become our ending inventory. Inventory will also increase in this month by 500. So inventory will jump to 5,000. Then there would be a, a decline in inventory of 3,500, so inventory will then fall to 1,500. And then 9,000, so the difference would be 500, so, uh, or 1,500, so 1,500 would then disappear and our inventory balance would be zero. Now, let's see the second part. So, ending inventory. So, ending inventory here would be. 4,500 in April, it would be 5,000, 15,000, or 1,500, and then zero. So, the cost at for unit cost of $20. Means uh, ninety thousand, one hundred thousand, thirty thousand, and zero. And then the finance charge uh, that's associated with that would be. So the finance charge would be at 6%. Um, things, I'm not sure what's going on with it today at all. It's just not.
So financing costs would be at 6%. And again, remember that's the 6% is per annum. So we must divide by 12 to get a monthly rate. And so it would be uh, 90,000 multiplied by 6% times divide by 12 and that would give us $450. For the month of April, it would be 500. And for the month of May, it would be $150. And there's nothing here. And the total here, $1,100. All right, so we have one more question to go. Is there any question with regards to question five? No. We're good, thank you. All right, so we have, I have one more question to go. Uh, question six, it's a very long question. Um, but we're going to at least, uh, so I have it done in a spreadsheet for you, which we will go through, but I'm gonna give you guys a chance to at least uh, uh, try and um, work the first part of it. So, so if you can do uh, part A, then we will, we will finish the question uh, together. So we're determining our um, our units sell, sold by just deter, like dividing the sales by the cost of the unit. So for each month. Yeah. So so you want to yeah you want to find the ending inventory for each month, um, and you want to find so you know what the beginning inventory is, and once you know what the beginning inventory for one month, you know what the what the ending inventory for one month, then you know what the next month's beginning inventory will be. And uh, yeah, you can find you're given enough information to you're given enough information so that you're able to find what is the what the cost is for a unit uh, and determine what the cost is for the inventory. So let me just bring this up here. Um, So it says, construct a month of production inventory schedule in units, beginning inventory in, uh, beginning inventory in January's per inventory. So that's all you need to, to construct is each month um, ending inventory. And then we're gonna determine the sales by just taking like the sales that it's given to us in dollars and just dividing that by the cost of goods sold or the sales of the unit? The sales of the unit. So, so the firm says it's last uh, pipe video game for $5 per unit. So therefore, if you want to determine how many units were sold based on, on say, say in January, right? It's cost you $5, you sell one for $5. So therefore, yeah. the number of units would be 95 divided by five.
Did anyone finish uh, the production schedule? The, um... Yeah, did you get the ending inventory to be equal to the beginning inventory? The ending inventory equals to the beginning inventory. It means that the, the, uh, the inventory at December being the same as the January inventory? As in um, 20,000. Yeah. It's not. It's not like it has to be that way. It's just. It's just coincidental. So it's not that it was. Um, it has to be that way. All right. So that's good. Twenty thousand. So uh, okay. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to share my screen uh, uh, with you guys so you can see my spreadsheet. All right, so here's my spreadsheet. I'll post this for you as well. Um, so you can see here, this is my schedule. So you can see that we have our leveled production here. And we have our sales number here. So we determine sales by taking the by taking the the, the um, sales in, in dollars that we have, and then we divide that sales in dollars by the price. So it, it, the price was five dollars. So we divide the ninety-five dollars by uh, five to give us 19. So that's how we determine the price, uh, the number of units for sales. And then of course, from that, we can then find our ending inventory for each month. So that's for uh, the first part, which is A. So and using that as well, you could find the total number of, of units for the year. So you could either sum this over here, which will give you, or you could just, uh, uh, again, divide the total in sales for the year by, the, by five to give you the total number of units that are sold for the year. Then you divide that by 12, and you get what would be the level production amount. All right, so this question is, is, um, is a good practice for persons who uh, didn't get a chance to, to practice the cash budget question. So the second part of the question asks for prepare a monthly schedule of cash receipts. And it says that says in December, before the plan, the, 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 the planning year were 1,000, 100,000. So here are our sales for January, February, March, April, uh, all the way through to December. Then we know 
that the 30% of the sales that are received will be cash and then the next 70% uh, of it will be received in the next month. So in that case, we have 70%, uh, we have 30% of January being received here, 28,500, 70% uh, of December's amount, so do remember that December is 100,000, so 70% of that would be 70,000. So the total amount of cash that we receive in December would be the sum of these two, which is 98,500. Similarly, in February, it will be uh, 26,000, which would represent 30% um, of February's sale, and 66,500 would represent 70% um, of, of January's sale. And we sum those two to give us a total cash received for Jan February. And the same could be done for February, for March, all the way through to December. So for cash payments schedule, remember there's a level production. So as a level production and production cost is $20 per unit, which is, uh, this is C now, $20, $2 per unit. So, and it's a level production. So the, the same amount will be paid uh, for the production cost throughout the, each month since it's a level production. And then we have additional cash payment of 40,000, which will be made each month. And so every month, the total amount for uh, payment, uh, cash payment would be 63,200. For D, we have to put this together in the cash budget. So in January, we have a cash flow of 35,300 that represent a difference between our cash payment in December of 98,500 Sorry, our cash receipt of 98,500 and the cash payment of 63,200. And that gives us a positive cash flow of 35,300. There's a minimum cash balance of $5,000. So the cumulative cash balance would be 40,300. So there'll be no need for a loan. Uh, there'll be no need, there, so there'll be no uh, loan cumulative loan balance. And so the ending cash balance would be 40,300. That 40,000 will become our beginning cash balance in February. And our cash flow in February, the difference between the receipts and the payment in February would be 29,700, to which we will add our cash payment of 40,300. Our cash, sorry, our beginning cash balance of 40,300. So our cumulative cash balance would be 70,000. So there'll be no need for a loan. So our ending cash balance again would be $70,000. That 70,000 we will carry to be the beginning cash balance for April, for March. So now the difference between receipt and payment for March is only 4,400. So uh, adding that to a beginning cash balance, we have a accumulated cash balance of 74,400, uh, 74, which becomes our ending cash balance in March and our beginning cash balance in April. Now the difference between payments and receipt in April is now negative. So there's a negative cash uh, uh, flow of 43,200. And when we add our 74,000 opening, 74,400 opening balance, we have 31,200. And that 31,200 would be our ending cash balance. And so that becomes our beginning cash balance in May. May, there is that difference again in payment between receipts and payments of a negative 44. 1700. So now we have a negative cash balance, a cumulative cash balance of, of 13,500. 
and so there would be the need for a loan. So since we have to maintain a cash balance of 5,000 and we have to pay off the deficit of 13,500, so the total amount that would be needed in terms of the loan would be 18,500, which is 13,500 plus our minimum cash balance of 5,000. So that gives us uh, the amount of loan as 18,500, which would, since it's the first time we're borrowing, will still be the cumulative loan balance. So now our opening cash balance in, in June would represent uh, the 5,000 and since there is again a deficit between receipts and payment for June, we now have a cumulative cash balance of 38,700. So there would still be more need for more loan. So uh, to make sure we, we maintain once more our 5,000 minimum, the total would be 5,000 plus 38,500. So since we're trying to maintain 5,000 here and we have a deficit of 38,700, so we would need 43,700. And so the cumulative cash balance would then go to 62,200, which would be the sum of 18,500 and 43,700. And so, you can follow the rest of, uh, of this and um, uh, the next six months and you will see exactly how all those are formed. So this is a good opportunity, it's a good question to practice your cash budget if you didn't get to do a lot of practicing of your cash budget previously. So please make sure you go through it and do this. I will post this, uh, this spreadsheet so you can also have the, the spreadsheet as your reference. Okay, so there is there any question with regards to that? Any question? No, I think we're okay. All right, so the next thing on our agenda for today is our test. We we have scheduled it for four. So um, some person maybe expecting it to be at four, uh, since we have said it will be at four. So we're going to take a break, probably 10 minutes, and come back at, at I would say, by uh, 4.55, uh, 3.55. And then by that time, uh, uh, between that time and four o'clock, you should receive your email for your test. And we will stay on Zoom. We'll have our cameras open, and then we will do a test for an hour, okay? Sounds good. Sounds good.